How's it going ladies and gents, my name's Andy, and today we're gonna take a look at a very interesting but mysterious story. On the morning of June 30th, 1908, there was a huge explosion. It happened in a remote forest area in Siberia near the stony Tunguska River. The explosion destroyed about 2,000 square kilometers of land and mostly trees. Approximately 80 million trees were flattened and dead. Fortunately, there were no civilian casualties. Nobody died, well, except for one guy. A local deer herder who felt the explosion and his body was thrust into a tree from the blast. The region was also filled with a ton of reindeer and hundreds of them were instantly killed as well. According to a witness who was near the area, he said, at that moment, there was a bang in the sky and a mighty crash. The crash was followed by a noise like stones falling from the sky or of guns firing. This explosion near Tunguska was the most powerful explosion ever recorded. It was nearly 200 times more powerful than the atomic bomb that hit Hiroshima in Japan in World War II. Now that's insane, and yet, up until today, nobody is exactly sure what happened on that day. Originally, researchers believed that a giant asteroid or a comet hit the land, which caused this huge explosion and destroyed the forest. But at the time, people have found very little traces of the object that hit the land. Part of it was because when the explosion did happen back in 1908, there weren't many people who ventured into that territory. The Tunguska region of Siberia was pretty much a desolate place with ridiculous weather. The winters are very long and freezing and there are only a couple of months of warm weather every year. The land was extremely difficult to navigate through because there were a lot of swamps in the area too. So very few even bothered to investigate and explore the area and frankly, the Russian government had more important things to worry about. World War I was just around the quarter and there was some political turmoil within the country and in the following years, the divide and civil unrest became an even bigger issue. So the truth is, there was just not that much interest in the Tunguska explosion at the time. But eventually, people started to check the place out. In 1921, a man by the name of Leonid Kolik started the first scientific expeditions into the area of the explosion. Kolik was the chief curator for the meteorite collection at the St. Petersburg Museum. Unfortunately, his first expedition failed as the conditions were way too harsh, and his team could not reach the area of the blast. It wasn't until 1927 when Kolik led the second attempt to explore the area and he finally succeeded. When he got there, the damage was still very visible. Trees were flattened and the land and soil was destroyed and the forest area was devastated. Initially, Kolik proposed the idea that a meteor hit Siberia and caused the explosion, but it didn't really make any sense. He didn't see any craters at all. There was no evidence that suggested a meteor caused the explosion. He never even saw any remnants of the meteor on the ground either and that the pieces of the meteor probably sank underground. He stated that we should expect to encounter, at a depth of hardly less than 25 meters, crushed masses of this nickeliferous iron, individual pieces of which may have a weight of 1 or 200 metric tons. It seems kinda reasonable, I mean the area of the explosion was mostly covered in water when he went there. A couple of years later, other Russian researchers claimed that it was probably not a meteor, but a comet that caused the explosion. The difference is, comets are made mostly out of ice instead of rock, so it's possible that the comet started to evaporate as it was getting close to the Earth's surface before it hit the ground. But it was still unclear, and there's still no tangible evidence that it was a comet either. By 1958, there was another expedition to the site and researchers discovered that there were tiny pieces of silicate and magnetite in the soil. And it was also high in nickel, so it was looking more and more likely that it was indeed a meteorite, going off of Kolik's original theory. By 2013, it was pretty much set in stone that it was likely a meteorite, as researchers continued to visit the area and collected rocks from the site. They examined the rocks and determined that they came from a meteor. Our study of samples from Tunguska, as well as research of many other authors, reveals meteorite origin of Tunguska events. We believe that nothing paranormal happened at Tunguska. 
Even though it looks like that meteorite theory is probably true, it didn't stop people from making some conspiracy theories about what caused the explosion. The craziest one that I've heard is that some have said that it was a black hole that collided with Earth. Which sounds kinda insane. But anyway, what made this explosion so shocking was the impact of it. No other event in recent history was as powerful as the Tunguska explosion. I mentioned earlier that it was almost 200 times as strong as the atomic bomb that hit Hiroshima. So it was hard for everyone to grasp how powerful it really was. And that's mainly because meteors aren't supposed to do that. Usually, if there was a meteor headed towards us, the Earth's atmosphere protects us. According to NASA researcher Bill Cook, the meteor will break apart a rock smaller than a football field across. So by the time it hits the ground, it should be really small, not destroy all the land that spanned over 2,000 square kilometers. Another possibility is that the meteor could have been very fragile, and by the time it entered into the Earth's atmosphere, it blew up before it hit the ground. In my opinion, I think that's the most likely scenario. That would be in line with the observations of the people nearby who witnessed the explosion back in 1908. They said that there were disturbances in the sky, like it split into two with loud thundering noises. Even today, scientists are still befuddled by the event and how crazy it was, and there's still a ton of more information that we don't understand. Researcher Gareth Collins has stated that what's challenging is that this process of the asteroid disrupting in the atmosphere, decelerating, evaporating, and transferring its energy to the air, it's a very complicated process. We would like to understand it more, to better predict consequences of these events in the future. Anyway, that sums up the story of the Tunguska Explosion. The most devastating explosion in recent history. What made this so scary to think about was, what if the meteor hit somewhere with a lot of people? We got pretty lucky it hit a remote area with no people living there, but 2,000 square kilometers is massive. In major cities, there are thousands of people per square kilometer, so it would be pretty damn bad if it hit a populated area. But at the same time, there's very little we can do to prevent that. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Thank you everyone for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.